So let's jump right in into understanding suicide. What are the most common risk factors for suicide? So to start with, although we're going to be talking about common factors, it can be a combination of factors. And there's no one thing that one can pinpoint as causative for the suicide attempt. Um, One factor is prior suicide attempt, right? And I want to get into that idea of maybe someone just dismissing that suicide attempt, something like, oh, it was kind of like just, quote, just a cry for help, right? Right. Uh, I think we have to take seriously that it is a cry for help, right? And the fact that someone has attempted suicide um, puts them, as I said, at risk for a repeated suicide attempt. And also that gets into something else, which is sometimes if a person is repeating that behavior, sometimes, and even it could be, sad to say, even a professional could start to think, well, they haven't killed themselves yet or it's not, hasn't been deadly or so serious, so maybe it's, quote, manipulation. And instead of increasing one's sense of concern about the person, it paradoxically even becomes less of a concern, if you can believe that. Yes, So the fact that someone has attempted suicide has to be taken very, very seriously. And if they repeat that suicidal behavior, they have to be taken even more more seriously because that can end in the in their death in the end of their life, right? So yes. talk a little bit about the suicide attempt. Um, risk factors also can be um, certain types of psychiatric diagnoses, although, again, just because there's a diagnosis of a certain disorder doesn't mean that the person necessarily is going to attempt suicide. But having what's um, diagnosed diagnosed as, per the DSM-5, a major depressive disorder. So, you know, in life, we all get sad, and there can be many reasons for being despondent, hopeless, etc. However, in a major depressive Depressive disorder, this is a physical disorder, and there are certain, quote, symptomatic um, and signs criteria. Uh, We can go over that at another point, but at least least two weeks, you know, of a depressed mood. There can be hopelessness, uh, lack of energy. We also want to talk about that a little bit more because sometimes when the person is suicidal, they can have an increase in their energy. And paradoxically, the person may actually appear to be in an uplifted mood. But that uplifted mood could be that they decided to, quote, and I'm putting this in quotation marks, solve their problem by killing themselves. So in that sense, they're not as helpless anymore. They, in their distorted thinking, now have a way out. Of course, that's not the the choice that we would choose for that, right? To be alive is the way through. Right. Yeah. So if you're having a major depressive disorder and one of those symptoms is hopelessness and disordered thinking and you're not eating or sleeping correctly and you're isolating yourself and your thoughts are turning towards suicidal behavior, of course, that's an increased risk factor, obviously, for killing yourself. Um, Anxiety can also be um, a uh, symptomatic or an increased risk factor, Um, even ADHD in terms of um, impulsivity could be an increased risk factor. Um, I'm also going to mention something um, I think fairly obvious, but the obvious needs to also be paid attention to, which is having lethal means in Mm. your home is really skyrockets the risk of suicide in the context of already having suicidal thinking. So if you have guns in your home that you have ready access to and there's ammunition, 
that uh, very much increases your risk. And there are more deaths of suicide by lethal means, by guns, than there are homicides. Right? Oh, wow. wow. Um, also, one can think of if, if there are uh, medications at home that could have dire side effects if you took a side effect of that medication. Right. Right. Um, I had I had shared in the prior interview that we did the very tragic story of my friend and also a prior coworker yeah. who um, drove her car to the bridge. Right. So yeah. and ended her life. And so in that instance, yeah. not having access to car keys, right, to drive the car. Right. Of course, the family tried to protect her from that. She ultimately found those keys. But this is another example. It's similar to the example of having a gun in your home, right? Right. Um, other risk factors are alcohol and substance abuse, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, alcohol um, is a depressant itself and can alter judgment, right? Um, as well as other substances. So those are risk factors. Um, having um, a history in the family of prior uh, of other people who attempted suicide or died by suicide. Um, there can be a genetic link to this as well. Uh, other uh, things that might increase risk of suicide are uh, relationship problems, right? So I, and I really think that that's something that needs to be brought to greater awareness that, and this is in a larger context, that the suicidal act does not necessarily mean that the person has a DSM-5 diagnosed psychiatric illness, right? right. One could temporarily be in acute dis despair, distress, overwhelm, see no positive future at all because of a relationship problem, a right. relationship breakup, uh, feeling rightly or wrongly abandoned by that person. Within the context of relationships, there can be domestic violence type uh, relationships. Um, and there could also be um, bullying going right. on. Right. And yeah. talk about cyberbullying. So all these can be factors. Um, other ideas for risk factors could be a person has a chronic illness. The chronic illness also associated with extreme physical pain. So physical pain, um, the experience of that. Uh, which is really what's going on in our brain, right? And that we interpret yeah. as pain. That that physical pain and emotional pain are in similar areas of, of our brain. Right? And escape from pain, whether that's a physical pain and emotional pain, can be um, a, quote, reason for a person's mind drifting in the direction of suicide. Right. Um, also, there can be economic factors. So the economic factors could be related to uh, loss of a job, uh, right. loss of one's house, um, tremendous fear over uh, livelihood and being able to support, you know, oneself. Right. So th these are all examples of risk factors. And yeah. in preparation for today, um, I printed out some material from this from the um, CDC, of which I want to refer to. Sure. So the the CDC is the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, and I'm going to read the list of what they say for individual risk factors, and then sure. comment if I haven't mentioned you know some of that. Sure. So it talks about a previous suicide attempt, yeah. right? And and in the context of that. Um, people keep this a secret, right? Oh, so there point. may have been prior suicide attempts, or there have been, but the person has not told anyone. And that can include their therapist and their psychiatrist. And right. I, I've had experience with that as well, which mm. led me to the um, 
what the intense realization that it's not only what someone is telling you, it's what they are not telling you, right? Um, so previous suicide attempt, history of depression and other mental illness, serious illness such as chronic pain, criminal legal problems, uh, yeah. job financial problems or loss, impulsivity or aggressive tendencies, substance abuse, current or prior history of adverse childhood experiences. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to just stop there for a second, because yeah. that's something that I think is so important for people who don't know. Adverse childhood experiences are also called ACEs. There is a quiz yes. you can take and you can see how many ACEs you have. And I have two. And it's just a very uh, helpful test to kind of give you an idea. And it has to do with different types of abuse you might have grown up with or was did you have a chronically or mentally ill parent? Did you have any sexual abuse, emotional abuse, physical abuse, or was there a divorce? Or, I mean, there could, some of the things are more serious, some of them mm -hmm. traumatic, but different levels, right? But it's still all trauma. Exactly. And it affects yes. our health. It really does. Yeah. yeah. Affects our physical health. That was part of the ACEs study, right? Yeah. Um, and it, it affects our, uh, obviously our mental health and it affects also the way that we view the world, um, right. because help seeking is a behavior. So that behavior is also based on the, on one's experience that I, that there is help available right. and I can be helped. Yes. If Actually, you're, I think I have three. Anyway. Okay. Ace things. If if you um, have experienced th those adversities in your life, it can also mean that you have developed a idea in your in your mind that it's better not to seek help, right? Mm. Or it's not yeah. safe to seek help, right? Which yeah. again, the original aces those experiences ought not to have happened, right? But it can yes. be detrimental in the future because you are not seeking help exactly when you ought to and not right. realizing that help is available. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, then it talks about, in terms of individual risk factors, a sense of hopelessness, which in a way feeds back into what we just talked about in terms of ACEs, uh, right. which uh, relates to past experiences, but also hopelessness in terms of current experiences and your idea of what the future is going to hold, right? right? Yeah. Um, and then um, a history of violence, victimization, and or perpetration. Mm -hmm. So those okay. are the listed risk factors. And then it goes on into relationship risk factors. And we've touched on some of those. Talks about bullying. Right. right? Uh, family, loved ones, history of suicide. The loss of relationships, and, and I touched on that a little bit before, and again, I really think that that needs to um, be more thought about um, right. it, in terms of also one's, one's self-protection, right? right? So, we, so we, we talk a lot about falling in love, right? Mm -hmm. right? Uh, and the, uh, I don't know, the value people put on that. Right to love and to be loved, sure. right? and of course. However, I don't think there's as much conversation of how does one cope when that love, right, is um, is either falling apart, or the love falls to hate, or the love right. turns into violence, or the love turns into lack of child support, or all these other factors. Because y you may or may not be surprised. I know that I've been surprised in um, participating in um, uh, Facebook groups around suicide loss survivors and support for them. How many posts seem to be about relationship breakdowns yeah. and suddenly the person um, shoots themselves, hmm. right? Oh, yeah. And of course, let alone uh, murder-suicide related hmm. to relationships. Yeah, we had one in our... I bet it, 
a quarter mile from us around the block last year. There was a man, he killed himself, his wife, and his 12-year-old son. And it's just so devastating. Yes. And I know you're going to, I'm going to say this, and it might, you might think I'm awful, but like, why did he have to take his daughter and his son? Why couldn't he just do it himself or get help? I mean, I hate to say that, but like, what is that? Is that, do you think I'm awful or do you, I think other people, I've had other, I told people the story and they get the yeah. same reaction of like, well, if someone yeah. wants to commit suicide, I'm not, I mean, I think it's horrible, but don't take your family with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, what I can appreciate think? what you're saying. You know, yes. um, again, I think uh, uh, it's related and there's, there's no justification for this. Of However, course. I think it's that degree of, emotional overload, you know, in a exaggerated, extreme way, out of reality kind of way. Um, Mm -hmm. And the person um, is in such, quote, pain and anger Anger, that they don't see any other solution. Right? Right. Yeah. Right? There's a phrase that, um, I'll put it in quotation marks because I think that mm, it needs to be modified. But, you know, quote, revenge can be the best way out, like live and have a good life, right? Right. Live and say goodbye, good riddance or whatever, right? But but to um, kill your loved ones and then kill yourself is not the solution to them. No, it's not. But in that that state of emotional um, out of controlness where the thinking brain, the prefrontal cortex is offline, um, and you have a gun in the house, and you've yeah. been drinking alcohol or doing substances, perhaps, right, that mm-hmm. it's a tinderbox for a violent outcome. 